Self-Love is the New Sexy, the podcast devoted to helping you overcome life's most painful and stubborn challenges so you can feel great, have more energy, and live stress-free every day. To reach your full potential, simply work with the powerful spiritual principles that are readily accessible to everyone. It's easier than you think. And on today's show, W. Mark Watts is going to show you how starting with self-love is the key to joyously and harmoniously making that happen. Hey, everybody. It's W. Mark Watts, and I want to say a big thank you, hello, and welcome to all of you listening to this episode of the podcast, Self-Love is the New Sexy. And I want to welcome you on this journey. And let's get into it. So the title of this episode is What I Learned from a Wild Group of Chimpanzees. So now I know right away you all are going to wonder what in the world is going on. But I want you just to bear with me just for a few minutes and I'm going to bring it all home so that this subject hopefully really resonates with you and kind of emphasizes one of the major attitudes one of the major tones that I want to set with this podcast. So I want you to learn something new about me that you probably don't know already is I'm a huge animal lover from a standpoint of wild animals. I love learning about wild animals. And anytime there's a new wild animal show documentary on cable, I'm watching it. And if I don't see it, I'm going to catch it the next time it comes on. So there's a series on BBC America called dynasties and it's done in in britain or from yeah, from the uk so the um the narrator calls it dynasties but we in america call it dynasties because we like it bigger and bolder we like the word to sound important so anyway this one particular episode of the series is about uh a group of wild chimpanzees in the country of senegal in west africa and they're led by a chimpanzee named Dave or David. And he's been leading the group for three years now, which is typically long for any leader of a chimpanzee group because the younger chimpanzee males are always looking to take his place and become king, become leader. That's just the nature of how it works. When they grow up, they want to become leader and challenge him. And, and again, Dave is getting older as well. So what happened is when the female become ready to give birth or they become receptive to um, getting pregnant, that really drives the testosterone in the clan crazy. And that's when they're more susceptible or more likely to try to take over because the, their hormones just take over. They lose their mind. So anyway. David did not have any allies with him. And then, unfortunately, what will happen in some instances is that a group of young males will try and get rid of the king. And then that opens the door for one of them to take over. Well, that's what happened. I mean, I won't go into the gory details, but they just jumped on him one night and pretty much left him for dead. And then they moved on because they had to go find water and feed. And ultimately, they thought that the crown was open. They thought now the leader is gone. Someone's going to take that place. And one of them called Luther, he decided that he was going to take the first stab at being king. He was going to try and become the new leader. Well, that happens over a period of time. You have to show some dominance over the group and everyone pretty much has to kowtow and agree that you're the new leader. So while he was doing that and while Dave was basically beaten horribly and left for dead, he actually got up and started to build his strength and he followed the pack. He followed the, the clan and caught up with them. Because he wasn't ready to relinquish his crown. He wasn't ready to stop being king. Now, this if you ever see this documentary and you see the condition that this chimpanzee was in, you would think that there's absolutely no way. Actually, I thought he was dead. I thought he was long gone. But he catches up with the group 
And you know what he does? In order to remain leader, he has to still become, he has to show them that he's still the leader, that he's the baddest in the group. And even though he's weak and beaten and cut and mangled, he still is able to prove to Luther, which has become the kind of semi-leader, that he's still the baddest man in the group. So he gets Luther to back down, and then none of the other chimpanzees try and test him. So now he's basically taken over again. He's reestablished his dominance as the leader of this particular group of chimpanzees when it was almost impossible for him to be able to do that. And so that's where I'm going to leave that story. There's a little more to it, but I'm going to leave that story right there. And the reason why I'm going to leave it there is because now I want to bring this home because what does that mean to us? What does that mean to you in terms of what we're attempting to do with this podcast? We hope you're enjoying today's show. If so, please take a moment to show your support for the show by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. If you have questions for W. Mark Watts, please feel free to contact him over at WMarkWatts.com, on Instagram at WMarkWatts, or on Facebook at Self Love is the New Sexy. All right, so here it is. Here is the lesson that I took from this. And I mean, I'm so excited and I'm really having to temper myself a little bit because I want to come across as screaming on, on the podcast and, and I, I want to make sure I remember to say what I want to say. But i have kind of so full tonight because I've been able to watch so many different documentaries that I've been waiting to see that I missed when they ran the first time. And typically I'll have, you know, several different topics for any given night that I want to record. And I usually pick the one that resonates the most with me. And this one got me the most excited when I watch after I watched this documentary. I said, man, I just got to speak on that. So what does that story teach us in our lives in terms of who we are and what we want to be and what we are going will, willing to do and able to do? Um, it's there's so many lessons in that one. There's so many lessons that I took from that documentary, which is one of the reasons why I, I love watching the animal kingdom, because even though they aren't able to do the, quite the same things that we're able to do as humans, they do a lot of things instinctually that you can watch and you can learn from. And it's so amazing. So the one thing I want to focus on tonight is this. There are going to be times in your life, some are going to be bad and some are going to be absolutely horrible. There are going to be times when you will be tested. There were going to be times when you, or there may be times, I should say, I hopefully they aren't, but there may be times when you feel so bad, when you feel like you might be left for dead when things can get so out of control and what you want or just basic survival could be so far away that you just really can't even fathom how you're going to make it through the day. Now, why do I speak on that? Because I've been there. I've been in several places that many people may not know. I've been in that place where you don't have a job and you don't have actually a place to stay that you can afford to pay for. I've been in that place where from a health perspective, I really felt like, man, this might be the end. This really might be it. So I'm speaking from a place of honesty and truth when I say those things because I really lived through them and I felt them. And when I watched Dave tonight, when I watched him get up off the ground, gashed up, feet, you know, fingers bitten off, toes bitten off, just scraped and bitten all over his body. When I watched him get up and rebuild his strength and start walking to catch up with his group, his group where he was the leader, I started to think back to some of those moments in my life when I had to do the very same thing. I had to step up. I had to get up off the mat. And I had to build my strength again. 
and I had to be the leader of my life. I had to be the person that I knew that I was, regardless of how beaten down I had become, no, regardless of what tomorrow looked like. What I had to focus on was right in this moment, who am I? Who am I in this moment? What am I able to do? Who am I willing to be? And what am I going to reestablish the dominant force in my life? And that's what self-love is. Self-love is all about reestablishing that dominant force in your life. Because once you can do that in your life, which is the main thing that matters, now you can be that dominant force for your clan or for your group or for your environment, for your family. So that lesson to me was so exciting to see that. And, and so inspirational. And again, like I said, it took me back to some of those times when I really had to, to give, I, it really took everything I had to keep going. And again, there may be times in your life where you may have to give every single thing that you have to keep going. But what you gotta do is you gotta really focus. Even Dave, they showed Dave where when he was gaining his strength, they made a point to say, he was eating everything he possibly could find because he knew he had to build his strength as quickly as he possibly could. Because if he didn't join that clan again very quickly, they would really kick him out of the group. And if he ever showed up after that certain amount of time, they would literally kill him. They would all jump on him and kill him. So he knew I've got to get back as quickly as I possibly can. But before I do that, I've got to gain my strength. And so for those of you who are listening to this podcast, you may be in on some part of the journey to gaining your strength. You may be looking for that food, that fuel. You may be looking for that next thing to help you. And I hope in some small way, this podcast helps you gain that strength in knowing that it's possible. If I can do it, you can do it. And you absolutely can do it because there are people doing it every single day. Every single day, someone's getting up off the mat and rebuilding themselves and becoming that dominant leader in their lives again. So and that's what I want you to really think about is, will am I able? Are you able to love yourself enough to become that dominant leader in your life where you're willing to do absolutely everything that you can to be the best that you can be, to love yourself to the fullest, to enjoy this life the way it should be enjoyed so that you can then, again, remember that overflowing cup. Have your cup filled up to the top and overflowing with joy and love and passion so that you have it readily available to give out to other people in this world, in your immediate environment, in your life. So that's all I got for you tonight. I hope that in some way, shape or form, this helps. And thank you for bearing with me through my animal stories, but get used to it because that's who I am. And they're going to be a lot more animal stories the longer you hang around. So until we talk again, and I'm so looking forward to that being very, very soon, continue to take care of yourself, love yourself with everything you possibly have so that you can love others as well. And I will talk with you again very soon. Take care now. Bye. You've been listening to Self Love is the New Sexy with W. Mark Watts. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Also, make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our show on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you listen to podcasts.